Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video I would like to show you how I made my .NET Monolith API feel like a distributed system in certain areas. So let me discuss the problem first and I want to start from a very simple example but then I will show you a more complicated example from my Code Wrinkles platform that I have built and that I have talked about in a previous video and show you exactly how I managed to solve the problems that I have. So let's think about this very simple step that the user wants to do. He or she wants to re register in our application. So there are a few things that happen here when the user registers that you can see here on screen. Now the first is that we kind of like need to write the user in the database. But then we also want to send the welcome email. Now sending the welcome email is unfortunately an operation that would take some time because it goes over the network. In our case, I am using Resend as an email service. The problem is that while I'm sending the email, the response or the user still awaits the response for an email that he or she really doesn't even care about right in that moment. They just want to go in the application. But let me also show you a more complicated example. Here I am on my Code Wrinkles Nova admin page and I have talked about this in the previous video. Nova is an AI assistant or an AI coach that's tailored for you and personalized to you to help you grow as a software engineer. And obviously one of the things that I needed to do with Nova is to be able to ground it in some very good and meaningful information. So what I want to do is to ingest some content, which would probably, for instance, be the .NET documentation that I already have ingested, the entire documentation, which I downloaded as a PDF. Now, the thing is that what I want to do here is I just want to choose a PDF file and I just want to upload the PDF. However, this entire process will take a very long time because first of all, we need to extract text from that PDF, which would take, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so. But then the second step is to generate the actual embeddings and chunking and write everything in the database. And based on how large the document is, that could take even five minutes or eight minutes or even longer. So we cannot just simply wait until the request fulfills because it will, in this case, obviously also give an HTTP timeout. And this is not what we want to have. Obviously, we have quite a problem. And whenever you will look up a tutorial, read an article or anything about this type of, let's call it bottlenecks that we might encounter while writing an application, everybody will say we should just use messaging. Like you can use Kafka, you can use RabbitMQ, Amazon SQS, Azure Service Bus, whatever. But literally everybody says you need to decouple these processes by adding a message broker. However, in my case, I was just building out a platform that's in alpha. Obviously, I don't really want to spend a lot of money on Azure Service Bus messages, for instance, for things that I could do better, basically even in a monolith. And also, I don't want to have an overhead of infrastructure to take care of my own Kafka instances or RabbitMQ and so on and so forth. I really don't need that. Like right now for code wrinkles at least is I'm paying money from my pocket to run it. And by the way, I'm not saying that message brokers are bad. They are incredible for distributed systems, for microservices, and whenever you really need them, and whenever you have a decent ROI of using them, both from a technical perspective, but also from a business perspective. However, I am running a monolith and still, even if we have a monolith, we have a technique, for instance, in .NET specific that we can use to make our monolith behave or feel like a distributed system. And how I solve or tackle these challenges that I had right now is using the channel of T class. This class is part of the system threading channels namespace and it's there I think even from .NET Core 3.0 or something like that. So you don't need any additional NuGet package, you don't need any external services, everything happens in memory, but still you can decouple basically your execution of the background processing tasks from, let's say, the execution of your main request and response pattern. Obviously, the semantics are quite different, but in the end, conceptually, it's exactly the same. You just have a producer that writes something to a channel, and then you have a consumer that reads something from that specific channel and does a specific background task. So the core pattern that I want to extract from an architectural point of view here in this example is very simple. I have an HTTP request. For that specific request, I have a command handler. And by the way, for this, I'm using command, my own library that I've created. And I have a video that talks about it in depth. And I will leave a link to that video in the description section down below. So I use command. 
So I have the common handler, and from the common handler, I just publish something to a channel, and then I can return immediately. I don't need to wait until something happens, or at least certain processing finishes. I just publish to the channel, and then I can return right away to the caller so that we can generate already an API response. And this is how your API still feels fast, your slow work will still happen in the background, but still in the same process, like you don't really need a physically different server, no additional infrastructure, no additional network hops, and no additional monthly cost. But let me now show you some examples on how I really used it in code in the Code Wrinkles application. So here we are in my editor, and the first thing that I have created to solve this problem is a sealed class that's called image channel and for this one we have a private field which is of type channel of queued email. Interesting thing happens in the constructor where we use this channel to create an unbounded channel. Unbounded actually means that events or messages will simply queue up and never block the producer. There is an opposite side of it which is a bounded channel that can consume just a certain amount of messages at a time and then the producer will be blocked if that specific queue is full and until a new spot becomes available in that specific channel. And then the only thing that we expose here is a value task, which is write async and a read all async. So these are the methods. The write async will be used by the producers while the read all async will be used by the consumers. The next thing that I've done is I have created this email queue class, which inherits this I email queue interface. I give you this one, the naming here is very bad for the class and obviously also for the interface because it implies we use a queue and it's not really straightforward and the main reason why I wanted to use an interface here is because actually this is one scenario where I can think about that probably in the future at some point I would like to replace this channel implementation with probably Azure Service Bus instance. Here we have obviously the private fields for the email channel and the email settings that's really specific implementation details on how we want to send the emails. Now one reason why I want to actually wrap everything into an implementation of my own domain specific email queue is because I can expose methods for instance like queue welcome email async which is responsible to send a welcome email. But then we have a lot of other types of email that we want to be able to send out. Like for instance, Q seven day Nova Winback email async. Then we have this Q 30 day Nova Winback email async and we have a bunch of different other emails. So as we have wrapped everything in our domain specific class and implementation, we can expose domain specific behavior to it. The way that I use it is here in my register user and this is my command a command handler, which does a lot of things here. And when we register the user here, by the way, we have different ways of registering the user. This is just the way that kind of like when you want to register with username and password, most of users don't do that because we have authentication and authorization with GitHub and also with Google. So everyone is pretty much using that one. But the core idea here is that, okay, we, we do all the things that we need to do to write things in the database when we register a user. We also use a lot of open telemetry here to set information about what happens. We generate access tokens, refresh tokens, set the expiry, and so on and so forth. Now, what I wanted to show you here is actually that by the time we have completed everything that really needs to be done so that we can create a response for the user, because the sending email, it's not something that needs to be done. It's something optional. It can happen at some other point. The user doesn't care about it. So what we use here is the email queue and the method queue welcome email async. And then I have this email sender background service, which is a background service. It inherits from background service with a lot of kind of like different information and definitions and settings on how this service should behave. Here, what I want to have to, to show is that I have this execute async method. And basically what we do here is we read the message from the channel. So when we have messages, we just read them and then we need to create a scope. And from this scope, we actually need to register or to get the required services. In this case, we need an email sender. This is a very important part because the background service is a singleton, but most of the services that you will probably use in background services will be scoped like database services, like HTTP client services and so on. So that's why I need to first create a scope from the scope factory and then get the required service so that it is scoped to that specific execution. And then I yeah, just use that sender to send the email uh, and so on and so forth. 
The only other thing that I have here is a task delay for a rate limit delay. And the reason is here that for the recent configuration is at least for the free tire is that I cannot really send more than two emails in one second. So that's why I want to have this, let's call it a rate limit where I wait for actually 600 milliseconds and then I only go and send the next email. And that's basically, that's how I decouple the email sending from the main execution. Now, let me show you also the more complicated example with the content ingestion part. So for this one, I have a content ingestion channel. It's very similar conceptually to what we had with the email channel. In this case, we just have a channel of content ingestion message. We described a content ingestion message and we look at this just in a few seconds. And here, once again, in the constructor, we create an unbounded channel with a single reader because we have only one background service that will read from this and single writer false because we will have multiple endpoints that would be able to use this channel. Like for instance, the endpoint to ingest a PDF, the endpoint to ingest an official docs, the endpoint to ingest an article or to scrape a YouTube video or the captions and then kind of like get some information from there. And then we just expose the same methods like write async and this read all async. Now from this content ingestion message here, we have a polymorphing content ingestion message types because we define a core abstract record that this, this is the content ingestion message. But then in fact, we have different type of ingestion messages like the PDF ingestion message, the trans, uh, transcript ingestion message, the doxy scrape message, and the article ingest messages. Then we have created, or I have created this content ingestion queue, which inherits the iContent ingestion queue interface. The reasoning is exactly the same as for the emails. The naming is as bad as for the emails, but the core idea is here that, that we have this content ingestion channel here. And from this content ingestion channel, we just have these methods, queue PDF ingestion async, that will simply publish or write to the channel a PDF ingestion message, then queue transcript ingestion async, and so on and so forth. So this is the domain specific class that exposes domain specific behavior that in the end kind of like it pushes some messages to a certain channel. Then we have the command, which is this ingest PDF command, which is also, let's say, an I command from my common library. And here there are also a lot of or bunch of other things that happen here, but I wanted just to show you that what we do is we write in the database the fact that we started a new job because in this case, we need the ability to kind of like query for the jobs if they are still ongoing, if they are finished, if we had an error for, for the job and it is marked as failed. So these are all the things that we want to be able to query and to present basically to the interface later so that the admin does know exactly what happened with each job. But the important part from our perspective happens just right here. So after we write everything to the database, the only thing that we do, we use the ingestion queue. And from the ingestion queue, we use the queue PDF ingestion async because, hey, we are in the ingest PDF command. So we use this specific method. We set some uh, custom telemetry then, and we immediately return the ingest PDF result with the job ID so that the front end can whenever it wants, check what's the status of this specific job. If we think about the flow that we had in the application is that the admin wants or starts an upload, then, then we have the extract text, which could, for instance, take five to 30 seconds, but then we have this generate embeddings, which based on how large that text file is, it could take one to five minutes or even more. Now, after the implementation of this channel, the flow is slightly different because the admin just uploads this. We have our command handler that we just create a job, we queue the message and return right away. So let me break down a summary of this specific pattern that we've been using using the channel of T class. So we have three different components every single time. First, we have the channel, which is a singleton service. It is an in-memory queue, it is thread safe and it is usually unbounded, or at least in my case, it was usually unbounded. Then we have the queue wrapper, which is also a singleton. And the main important thing from my point of view here is that this exposes domain specific methods and hides the channel implementation itself so that we can theoretically swap this implementation with something else later, like for instance, Azure Service Pass. And then we have the background service, the hosted service that runs uh, once again as a singleton. And that's why we need to create a scope each time that we want to actually do something in the background service and use scope services there, uh, which would, you would probably want to if you're using your database services or repositories 
or HTTP clients and so on and so forth. Now, let me also tackle the less fun part because in engineering, everything comes with trade-offs and channels are great, but obviously we need to be aware of the limitations that they bring with themselves. So first of all, we need to understand that channels are in memory. This means that if your application restarts, your queued messages are simply gone. For welcome emails, that's probably fine. We user can request another or whatever. But for financial transactions, if we would do financial transaction, obviously that will or that would not be fine. So you need to always kind of like think a little bit what are the pros and the cons in each specific scenario that you want to use it for. So generally, I would think that it might be worth considering channels if messages can be lost on restart without causing any specific problems, if we have a single server deployment. Also, if you have background tasks within one application, that's also very, very nice. But if you have or background tasks that need to orchestrate several different applications in a system, then obviously this channel of T is not a very good example for that. But overall, I would say that for a lot of the monoliths doing background work, channels are just fine and will help you bring a little bit of, well, distributed system-like behavior in something that's a monolith and that a lot of people would discard simply because they need to wait a lot until they are able to send an email and then create a response. But you can just decouple this without having something else or a third party or another service. So now I would be curious to hear from you if you have used channels for this specific purpose and if yes, please tell me how your experience was. If not, then tell me what or why didn't you use that? Or what was the problem that you encountered while trying to use this channel of T for decoupling background work that could be performed in the background itself? If you have any additional question or just want to get a discussion started, head over to the comment section, leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. And if you made it so far, and if you're not a subscriber on this channel, I think it's worth you hit the thumbs up button for this video and subscribe to the channel because I'm pretty sure that there would be also other videos coming or lined up for you that you might also find interesting. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.